after having thousands of vulnerable and deep conversations with adult women across countries and age groups, it's clear to me that most dads didn't have the insight, patience, or skill to teach their daughters how men think and act. And the worst part about it is no one else did. So today, I want to share with you seven additional vital lessons on men and relationships that can help you find your forever after and stop wasting time with guys who can't give you what you want. The first thing I'd like to say, if you're suffering right now, if you're going through challenges, if you don't really quite get guys, if you've gone through a relationship, if a relationship that doesn't work, if you've been betrayed or ghosted, and there's a part of you that says, I want more, another part of you that's really scared to take action, that I see you and I feel you, and I'm sorry that no one has shared with you certain skills and certain bits of wisdom that can make a giant difference in your life moving forward. This is in no way an attempt to push down dads who've done the best with what they have. With some exceptions where I've heard some horror stories, I'd say that most dads don't know how to do this. Your dad probably didn't know how to teach you how to connect with men and how to vet men properly and what to look out for, what to be on the watch out for. And as a result of that, you've done the best with what you can, but understandably, you've made some mistakes and you've found yourself in situations that are far from optimal. So what I want to do today is give you some additional insights. I have a video that I posted maybe a month ago that shared seven insights about men I wish you knew if you were my sister, I want to expand on that. So if you haven't seen that, I'm going to link it in the description. This is just seven additional skills and bits of wisdom that can make a giant difference in your ability to choose better men in not get caught up in situations that are not good for you and have the capacity to get what you want much faster. Now, it's also common as you learn more things, as you have more wisdom to go back and say to yourself, I wish I'd known that 20 years ago. And while I understand the pool to do that, I'm going to ask you today to, instead of going there, ask yourself, where can I go if I start employing this, if I start using this for my next decades going forward? Because we can't change the past, but we can definitely change the future. The first additional insight I wish your dad taught you about men is that without kindness, you have nothing. And here's what I mean by that. There's going to be a long laundry list of items you're going for in a partner. There are going to be things that feel really appealing and connected. And you might find yourself with someone who feels like an intellectual match, who feels like he gets you, who understands you, who makes you feel, quote unquote, really special and seen and validated and beautiful. If that man doesn't have the capacity of empathy and kindness and compassion, he is not good for you. He's not going to help you to be the best version of yourself. You're going to go down a path where you're going to feel unseen, unheard, misunderstood, disrespected, at a high level, potentially even neglected or abused. So as you're making your decisions and you're so keen on certain guys, if you take a step back and you notice that for the majority of their interactions or the depth of their interactions when push comes to shove, there's a lack of kindness in them. They don't have the capacity to feel that sense of I'm hurting someone or I'm hurting you specifically, then please choose to, no matter how many boxes he checks, move away from him. The second insight I wish your dad taught you about men and relationships is that you need to learn to separate intensity from depth. Here's what I mean. It's going to be likely that when you find someone who resonates with you, especially if you've been waiting for that someone for a long time, that it feels so right that you go really quickly all in that you share more than you usually would with someone, that you are physically closer, that you spend more time with them. Maybe you go from zero to 60 miles an hour in 2.1 seconds like the new Tesla. And my advice is that you need to understand that there's no variable that can compensate for time. When you take more time to get to know someone, you get to see certain things that may not be felt at the beginning. And, and I know it's hard, especially if you're telling yourself, I've known this guy forever, even though you haven't, or maybe we're past life partners, if you believe in that, or anything of that nature. My suggestion is to pause that for a second and consider a different alternative, a different hypothesis that you want to feel something and this guy is giving you an opportunity to feel it and you're going all in without breaks, without looking at your rear view mirrors, and it's highly likely that you can crash. So if you 
learn to understand that intensity and depth are not the same thing, then you need more time to make sure that that intensity is sustainable, that it's not fleeting, and that it's based on something real. I don't care if the guy tells you you're amazing. If he just met you, he may not really know it. And you want to make sure that he's saying it because he knows it, not just because he has the intuition that you are. Third insight that I wish your dad taught you about men and relationships is that you need to stop overvaluing instant combustion. What does that mean? It means that in this culture, in this world, there's a high tendency of evaluating a human being based on how intensely awesome you feel the first moment you meet them. Our patient has gone down throughout the years. So that means that if you connect with a guy who has all the qualities you might be looking for, but he's not clearly expressing them and shouting them at the seven winds, and you're not feeling super attracted to him, you might say he's out. You might tell yourself that you didn't feel it for him. And you might be secretly hoping for that instant combustion to be the thing that tells you he's the one. First thing, extra bonus point, there's no the one. The one doesn't exist. There's multiple potential the ones and you will choose one who is resonant with you. Stop telling yourself the story about the one and twin flames and all that stuff. Then you might give that person a better chance. Now, I'm never someone who share with you, you should connect with someone who you don't feel chemistry for long-term, or you should fall for someone that you feel is more like a brother than a lover. Not at all. What I'm saying is that if your quest for that instant connection is high, you're going to leave gold on the table. You're going to leave guys that maybe at the third or fourth date, you would have felt something really amazing and connected. And because you didn't give him the time of day, because he didn't feel the instant attraction, then he's gone on and marrying somebody else. Fourth insight I wish your dad taught you about men is you need to learn to separate confident men from selfish men. Here's what I mean. I get it. You're not looking for a guy who's insecure about himself, who's wishy-washy, who can't stand his ground, who can't stay what he wants, who's second guessing himself. No one has ever shared with me. I'm looking for a guy who's really insecure about himself. That's never happened. However, in your search for that, in your search for a masculine, intelligent, conscious, assertive, go-getter, ambitious guy, you might be confusing a guy who's very selfish for the confident guy you're looking for. You might be connecting to a guy who is basically all about himself and he's where the highway and he's basically made a life based on kicking metaphorically other people around, just pushing his way through without the empathy, the compassion, the kindness, the insight, the win-win is more of a win-lose situation and you might feel really attracted to that guy because you feel he's making things happen. He's the type of guy who's going to step over you. If push comes to shove, it's going to be his way, not your way. If you learn nothing from this video with this, it will maybe save your emotional life for years on end. And that is courage without empathy and kindness and humility is worth nothing to you. If you connect with a confident guy who doesn't have humility as well, who doesn't have kindness or compassion, he is worthless to you. It's like having the keys to a castle that is infested with termites. It might seem like it's great, but it's going to fall over. Now, before I share my last three points with you, which are some of the most important ones in this video, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the core root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, helping those women to create the worth in themselves and to create the connection they want and sustainable, lasting relationships, even when they've never had that before, and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the elusive answer to the question why you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first thing in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have two things. The answer to the question why you're still single, and a custom report based on your specific blind spot that's going to share with you what's the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Fifth insight I wish your dad had taught you is ask him what you're afraid to ask early on. Here's what I mean by that. When the connection is strong, when you've not had what you wanted, when you're afraid he might go away secretly, the tendency to postpone and push down and not share things that you're feeling or to negate your intuition it is great. So what I'm asking you to do is when you start connecting with guys, start asking tough questions early on. If you can't answer those tough questions, then he may not be a guy for you. Now, that's not to say that you should give him an inquisition, sit him down and give him a job interview. That, that's different from what I'm saying. But when you connect with a guy, you should be able to have a conversation that's wholesome, including fun, playful, connected, alive things. And 
hard questions that let you know his intentions, what he's looking for in life, what he values, what he wants, what he doesn't want. When you don't have the answer to those questions, when you're afraid to ask those questions, you can get yourself in situations where you fill in the blanks. And when you finally get to a place where you want him to step up to the plate, he doesn't want to. And he would have told you in so many letters at the beginning if you had asked him especially because there's less to lose at the beginning. The sixth lesson about guys that I wish you'd have taught you is I need you to pay closer, more consistent, more disciplined attention as to how you are feeling in his presence and after his presence. You need to be really aware as to not just the intensity, the excitement, the passion, the validation, but how do you feel inside? Do you feel seen? Do you feel heard? Do you feel uplifted? Do you feel more or less valuable? Do you feel more or less worthy? That matters. And a very powerful way to do that, that doesn't rely just on your memory, which can be fussy when emotions are involved, is to have a little journal you take with you everywhere you go. And when you interact with them, if something happens, both exciting or unexciting, write it down. Write down what happened. Write down how you felt. Write down so you can come back to it with a more emotionally sober state Take a look at it and see a pattern. If you've noticed the last 10 times you've connected with him, he's putting you down and he's trying to, in some funny way, try to jab at you emotionally. You might say something really strongly. You might set a boundary. If you don't write those things down and you don't really acknowledge what you're feeling, you might be in this illusion of a relationship that's not really serving you. The last insight that I'll share today that I wish you that taught you is give men a path to win. Be as clear, as direct, as non-mysterious as possible when it comes down to sharing your needs. Please do away with the, it's more romantic if he guesses it, or if he really knew me, then he would know already. I think that's bullshit, honestly. And if you take the time to express to a guy, here's how I'm feeling right now, here's what I need from you, he might just step up and give it to you. When you just share without taking the time to say, right now, I don't want any feedback, all I want is to share my viewpoint and be strong for me, when you don't say that, He's going to say things, he's going to either get disengaged, he's going to start suggesting ideas that will put you off or turn you off. And what I want is for you to let him know what you need in such clear terms that the answer could be yes or no, but not maybe. Hope this is helpful, insightful and useful. If it is, it means the world to me and to my channel, because this is the way I get to grow and share this with more women. If you click like and subscribe, if you find this is helpful for someone, please share it their way. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want, Without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.